Tov, we're continuing Perek Aleph Perkei Avot. Today we're going to do one Mishnah, Mishnah Tet Vav. Uh, sometimes we're able to do more. Some Mishnayot, there's quite a few commentaries on. And here, even though Shammai is going to tell us three things, that's all, three. Nevertheless, there are various limudim, various things to learn in every one of those important statements that he makes. So, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, this Mishnah, there may be other Mishnah Yot. Shammai. Shammai was together with Hillel. And Hillel, we already discussed what he had to say, some very valuable information. Hillel and Shammai both received the Torah, both give over the Masorah, the tradition, to their students, to future generations. Nevertheless, each one has his own personality. Each one also has his own experiences, personal experiences. They're both living at the same time, the same generation, and as we've said before, many of these words of the Chachamim, even though they relate to all times, nevertheless, they may have said what they said as a result of an experience in their own times, as a result of seeing something that was wrong, something that needed to be corrected, something that needed to be emphasized, to make people aware of. And that is why each Chacham not only teaches us things that everybody accepts, of course, and everybody would be able to say it, and agree to it, nonetheless, they, are, they stressed certain points because they believed that these, these points needed to be reinforced, especially during the, their time, their lifetime. But as you will see with the words of Shammai, these are very fundamental words. They're not just specific to a particular time or to a particular people. They're very fundamental because this is all Torah Min HaShammai. By Moshe Kibel Torah Misinai, we said even all the midot and anhagot about the proper conduct, and all of these ashkafot, the, the, these views and perspectives of, about life, uh, are very very important at all times. So we're holding with the words of Shammai. Shammai Omer, Shammai Omer, Ase Torah Techa Keva. Torah is important. We know that the limud of the Torah is crucial for a Jew. The Torah is his guide, his map, on how to live his life. It is a manual of instructions on how to conduct oneself in many areas of life, whether it's in marriages, whether it's in business, just about everything. The Torah touches on all aspects of life. So a Jew cannot be without the Torah. The question, however, is how much time to devote to Torah? You know. It says that we have Pesukim that seem to indicate a day and night, all day long. And it's just a fact that some people learn more than others. Some people learn less, some people have less time. So how much should we devote to Torah? Shammai says it's not the hours that matter so much. Obviously, the more time you have, Torah is more valuable than anything else. More precious than all the pearls. But it's not a matter of hours. It's a matter of aset Torah keva. The ikar in the learning of the Torah is not so much the number of hours as much as making sure that the learning of Torah is something constant in one's life. That one is consistent, that one is regular about it. He does it every day. As much as possible. It says kviot is very significant very, very significant, to establish a certain amount of time, to establish a certain hour every day, very, very significant. More significant than that is if a person is strong enough not to give up that hour or two hours for whatever, no matter what happens. In other words, that's real kviyut. Kviyut is therefore not only setting a time, which is important, it's also good for discipline purposes, it's good for getting used to something, but you know, setting up a time is great. You know, you know that at a certain time you have a shiur, a certain time you learn, a certain time you sit down and say tehilim, or shnai mikra vechatargum, you review the parasha, whatever it may be. So the hour is, is significant, it's definitely something very important. But the keva, the word keva also means that you're strong enough, lo levater, not to give up that hour for whatever else happens. When a person establishes a time and he keeps to it, then it shows it shows that he values it, it shows that he cares about it. He's devoted to it. He doesn't give it up. It's a set time. 
That's beautiful. And there is a term that's used for, in the world of in the world of Torah called a matmid. Matmid from the Hebrew word hatmada, or as the Ashkenazim would would call it, a masmid. Say, oh, he's a masmid. And that used to be, and it still is, a term to describe a, a Talmid Chacham, who's not just a Talmid Chacham who's knowledgeable and who learns Torah, but that he, he does so on a regular basis and he devotes a lot of hours. But, as Rav Chaim Mevolajan used to say, a real Masmid is not a person who learns the whole day. A real Matmid is one who learns every day. You see the difference? The idea is that he doesn't miss a day. There's a, there are people who learn many hours, but they do it once in a while, once a week. The idea here, the significant idea of Hatmada is on a regular basis, constantly. Constantly means almost, if, if possible, every day. You know, of course, Shabbat is, in, is part of the week, and Shabbat is different, and our schedules are different, but a person can learn a little bit on Shabbat too. So Kvi'ut, for Torah, very, very significant that it, that it be done on a regular daily basis. Rashi is another commentary here, one of the commentaries, and he says that there is a, there is a way that a person can achieve a lot in his learning. And how is that? Through Kvi'ut. And his interpretation of Kvi'ut is setting a goal. So setting a goal sometimes is good planning. <clears throat> Even though not always things work out according to our plans, as we said about Mahashavot, right? Belevish. Yeah. But it's okay still it's okay and it's still good to plan. Even though it may not turn out the way you want it, it's not a sur to plan on the country. Go ahead and plan. Go ahead and, and try to establish a goal. This is much more than planning, and I'll tell you why some planning by itself is not necessarily always good. But setting a goal is good because setting a goal may force you to stay within uh, a certain amount of time or a certain uh, structure of a day so you can accomplish the goal. So some people who are especially goal-oriented, this is very good. You know, in, when, in my younger years, I was very much like that. I always set goals uh, for certain things. And I was able to accomplish, you know, Baruch Hashem, because of that. And even though it meant not going to play soccer with my friends, not going out to recess when everybody else was, I had to learn my Swahili lessons, if you know what that is. That was my goal then, to read through that book. Right? Farsi was later. <laughs> first Swahili. First whatever, whatever I got my hands on, languages. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So I set a goal, right? <laughs> and it worked. You know, this was the goal, and I was serious. I wasn't married yet, so I didn't have anybody, you know, uh, to uh, interact as much that I need to interact with. I mean, one's wife and children, families, you interact with them. You go out with them. You can't just sit at home a whole day. You eat dinner with them. You, you know, you go on vacation. So it's, things change when you get married. You should still get married, for those of you who are single. <laughs> it's healthy. It's good the interaction and the sharing of one's life with another person. Nevertheless, things change, you know, when you're, when you're sharing your life with someone else. But that's a very important idea too, what Rashi is telling us, even though it's a little bit of a different idea here, he's telling us set goals, but make those goals kavua. This is how you achieve in life. Another interpretation is not necessarily rela relating to Torah in itself, but it's to what Torah teaches. Torah, amongst other things, teaches how to behave, how to conduct ourselves. Midotovot, good character. Uh, you find a lost object, right? All kinds of mitzvot that have to do with being a good person, being a caring person. So, Aset Torah Keva can be referencing one's hit nahagut, one's composure, one's conduct, that it should be steady. No mood swings, if at all possible. That one day you're kind, and you're good, and you're learning, and you're helpful, and the other day, totally not. In other words, a person should strive, at least should strive. I mean, we're all human, and we're always, of course, 
under different kinds of pressures, circumstances change, and we're not robots. You know, we do have feelings and we do have uh, all kinds of things that disturb us. You know, so we react. What can we do? Nevertheless, one should strive. In other words, an effort should be made that there should be a certain kviut in our itna good. In other words, that it should be steady. That a person should not, God forbid, be uh, one day nice, the other day not nice, one day giving, charitable, and the other day stingy. In other words, there has to be a certain kivriut, a certain steadiness and regularity in one's itna hagut, in one's conduct. Yes? Uh, like you mentioned, Rabbi, uh, one of the questions that they'll ask you when you go to online yeah. is if you set time. Right. Say, if somebody doesn't have the set up for it, or maybe the person doesn't have the time for it, and he supports one, if he, okay. is he still yotze when they... Excellent it? question, yeah. Very good question. I mean, what happens if one is not equipped uh, to learn? I mean, everyone can learn a little bit and, and needs to learn even the very basics because he needs to know halachot, okay? So the very, very, very basics, everyone needs to learn. Everyone needs to uh, somehow find out what his duties and obligations are and therefore hire a teacher for the basics. But on the other hand, it is a very high level mitzvah of supporting others who learn Torah. And those that support others who have more time to learn Torah will have a share in the Torah that is being learned by them. So, so it, it does not exempt them completely, but if they, are, if they are very occupied in earning a living, and that's the, the type of, uh, of life that they lead, that they are trained to, to do something, they have inherited a business, and they're just cut out for that, they can choose, of course, uh, to uh, be more involved in Torah study by supporting Torah. And if they can afford it, that is a tremendous way of earning credit, merit of learning Torah by not learning it. In other words, by not you yourself sitting and learning it, but by supporting somebody else who's learning so it. So they won't accuse him? Won't no, they won't. They will not. No. That, is the, that was the partnership. The famous partnership well, between Yisachar and Zevulun, where Yisachar learned most of the time Zevulun was working in the seas, right, traveling, and did not have that much time. So you got to learn the basics. I mean, there's no excuse to not know the basics. Otherwise, how do you know how to observe Shabbat, right? How to say Berachot, what's kosher, what's you have to know the basics. But if somebody can afford and somebody wants to uh, somehow. Uh, give another individual the, the parnasa, or help him with the parnasa, and that he should help him with the, a greater share of Torah, that's, that can work out very nicely, yeah. In speaking about it now, good in conduct, consistency also means the same way that I am with myself or with my family, I am with others. Some people are very nice to their family members, but they're not nice to others. And then you have your very, very strange phenomena that some people are nicer to others than, the, than to their own family. That one is a little hard for me to understand. As they say in English, you know, charity begins at home. You help your family first. You have to be kind to your spouse. You have to be helpful to your own family members first. Your family comes first. It's not selfishness. It's the correct common sense thing to do. But don't limit it. The home is the center of all affections, but not its limits. It's the center. It should be. I mean, they're closest to you. You have greater responsibility, therefore, towards them. So the itnagut, in the same way that it's important that one be consistent within him, with himself, it's also con important that he be consistent with others. That it was not just to be proper at home, but to be proper with others as well. Yeah. He just, said, he just said you don't understand how some people can be nicer to others, to others who well, are not family, not his family. and what? not to one's own family, brothers and sisters and, and kids and parents. You Why is that? Psych psych I don't understand. It. It's a psychological problem, perhaps. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I'm just, I'm, it's not that I don't understand. I mean, I don't accept it. I can sometimes understand it because it could be because of the circumstances. It may be that a person is very, very upset 
I mean, that, that's obvious. It's not that they're so nice to him and he doesn't want to hear them. He's really got a problem then. Many times what happens is that the whole family doesn't get along. They have issues. And this person is a very giving person and he decides to give to others more. Well, you know, it's hard. We don't want to judge anybody here. It's just that it's a, it's a very difficult situation when something like that happens. It doesn't look right. Something is not right. Kviut is important. Consistency is, is in life, in one's uh, way of, of doing things, in one's uh, values. It, it's always important because there are times that we are pressured. There are times that the circumstances uh, are very demanding of us. And in the olden days, we're talking about 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years ago, depending on the country, a Jew's life was in some ways, and at times, very pressured because of the goyim. They didn't allow them, they gave them a very hard time. <coughs> Today it's a little bit less of a problem because, I mean, look, even communism came down. You can be an observant Jew today almost without any difficulties in Russia. In America, how much kosher food there is. Today there's a lot more ease to be an observant Jew, to be Jewish, any, almost anywhere. Even in Malaysia, that's a Muslim country. I think it shouldn't be a problem. They're not going to persecute you, hopefully not. Right? So what happens is, during times where there's a lot of difficulties and challenges, if a person has a certain kviut in his life, and he's gotten used to this kind of, a, or this kind of way of doing things, that he will not easily compromise his Judaism. Some people easily make compromises. Okay, let's take off Hashem de Kippah. Let's not stand out so much as Jewish. People make compromises. They're afraid of, the, they're afraid of what the Goy will say, what the Goy will do. Compromises, compromises is very, very nice, very, very special between husband and wife, yes. There are times compromise is the only way to get along with people, but not compromises with Torah, because the Torah is kavua. The Torah was never meant to be compromised, to make changes to it. To yourself, yeah, compromise with others, you know, in your schedule, your, your interests, you have to sometimes give in. I mean, your wife wants one thing, you want something else. You compromise. If they're very, very different, what can you do? You know, she wants purple curtains and you want yellow, so you choose orange. What's <laughs> in between? <laughs> right? I don't know. You find some compromise. <clears throat> you know, you can, you can, you know, find a solution. But when it comes to Torah, chaz v'shalom. Torah is something that is kvua, kvua. It's fixed. And therefore does not tolerate compromises. Okay, what do we do? I've raised this question many times. What do we do if we want to show that we're devoted to our shiur Torah that is regular, on a certain day at least of the week, and on that same night your wife tells you, Honey, my mother's coming to town and guess who's going to pick her up at the you airport? Are. You are. And you better do it. What are you going to do now? You run to limo. Yeah. <laughs> One solution, if you can afford it, is you rent a limo and you send flowers. And do both. And you tell your mother-in-law, see you later. <laughs> but welcome. <laughs> and your wife may go along with that idea. As well, you know, it sounds great. Wow, my husband all of a sudden is so generous. You know? <laughs> and this is just an idea of what you can do. It's possible to find a solution and keep both. You're being respectful. You're preserving your shallow bite. And you're preserving your shoe. The shoe is more important, by the way, than anything else. Torah? You can't be without Torah. <coughs> It's like going hungry. I mean, you want to eat. The Torah is necessary for neshama. People don't see it that way, but that's the fact. That's the reality. Same way we eat and drink for our health, for our physical needs, the Torah is for neshama. So we try to find a solution and preserve both the Shalom Bayit and the Shiur. However, there are times that things can be very, very difficult. You know, it was difficult for our schedule, our regular schedule. Why is, why is that? Because you have a wedding in the family. Invited to the wedding, it's your own son. It's your own wedding. <laughs> it's, it's somebody that you need to be. What do you do then? No problem. You're allowed to go. Things happen. There are exceptions. Just make sure 
that that day does not go away without any Torah at all. You couldn't make your one hour that day when you come home, you sit down for five minutes or whatever you can until your eyes close and you learn your couple Mishnayot, your couple Halachot, your couple Pesukim. You do something so the Yetzirah does not defeat you on that day. That that day should not go without any Torah whatsoever. In that way you've demonstrated Kviut, as we said in the very beginning, not with hours necessarily, but with constancy with regularity, even though all it was was five minutes. See, I got my kviut. I didn't miss that one day. That's great. You know, with antibiotics, they tell you the same thing. You gotta take it for the next five days. You don't miss a day, otherwise it loses the whole effect. And we spoke about this. Going without Torah for a day, it abandons you for two days. The, the, the connection is, is weakened, very much weakened, as time goes by without Torah. So you do whatever you can. And now, we'll talk a little bit about what you mentioned. Shamayim telling us the Hasetor Keva, he's reminding us, pretty much, indirectly, of what's going to happen when we head upstairs. They're going to ask us these questions. And the, one of the first questions will be, Kavate Etim La Torah. Did you set aside time to learn Torah? Why is that an important question upstairs? Because it's not only our obligation, it's not only a mitzvah. If a person learns Torah on a regular basis, kavata they ask, not lamata, kavata, did you set aside some time? This will make an entire, a big difference in his life. His entire life, if a person upst comes upstairs and they, they show him a movie, pretty much a movie, yeah, of his entire life, from the diapers until the wheelchair. Hopefully he'll never need a wheelchair. But a wheelchair is not so bad, but you know, there's worse things than that. But right, from the beginning till the end. Listen, he started off in another kind of wheelchair, it was called a carriage. You know, you're always having some sort of carriage. One is big wheels, one is small wheels. You know, you start like that, you end like that. Anyway, we, I wish for all of us that we should always be on our two feet, standing Amen. with all our faculties, Amen. healthy. Amen. The Amen. eyes could see, the ears could Amen. hear, and, and you can enjoy your favorite meal even on the last day <laughs> with all your teeth. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, I could, you know. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, it happens sometimes that people, of course, have some uh, limitations. Either way, throughout a person's life, they, there's ups and downs. And a person heads upstairs and he sees all those ups and downs. He sees the entire video, his youth, his later years. And they stop the video, they pause it at the age 42. That, at that time, there was a very negative incident in his life. It could have been a divorce. It could have been a lawsuit that he sued somebody. Could have been he hurt someone's feelings, something very negative in his life that stands out. And he tells him, Sir, you see this? Had you been learning one hour a day, Musa, Chumash, that would never have happened. Your outlook towards life would have been so different. You would have not taken <clears throat> things so seriously. You would have been more forgiving. You wouldn't have been so crazy about money the way you were that one hour of Torah would have reminded you of your tachlit, of your purpose of life. It would have softened you in your midot. It would have made you more flexible and able to get, to get along with people, even with tough people. That one hour of Torah would have made a difference in your life. So Kavata Etim La Torah brings a lot of shame. It has the potential to bring shame to the person by reminding him, look what kind of a life you would have had had you learned Torah. Your hashkafot, the way you look at life, would have been so different. It's for your own good, therefore, that, we should, that you should learn Torah. Shamayim telling us to do things the often kavua is also speaking to the ones who love to procrastinate. You know what procrastinate means? To push things off, to delay. And they say everything manana. Manana is something that we will be reminded about later on in Pikavot, the Chachamin tell us, don't have the attitude of saying about something that's good to do, 
Lecheshi. But when I have the time, I'll do it. Shema lo tibane, they say. Whoever says what we said last week, whoever said the time, tomorrow will come. Whatever you can do now, that was Hillel's words. If you, if you can do it now, do it now, because tomorrow may not come. If you push it off, Shema lo tipane, you may not be around to do it. Right? So to push something off, something that is good, is not a good idea. And in the same way we don't push off food, we love to eat, we don't want to fast on that day. It's not a fast day. In the same way we make a kvi'ot to eat, to drink, to have something during the day, in the same way we have to make a kvi'ot for learning, that that should be part of our day. In the same way we do this, and we don't miss, barely miss. Do this too. Why should Torah be any less? So Shammai is basically telling us, don't make Torah anything less, anything less than than, uh, than other things that are important to you. I think that an, another, another very interesting uh, interpretation of these words is mentioned uh, in the name of the Koznitzer Magi, the uh, big, big tzaddik that lived about 200 years ago passed away close to 200 years ago, third generation of the, after the Baal Shem Tov, the Magid Mikoshnitz, the Bistro Mikoshnitz. So he says like this, a lot of people read the Torah, they learn it, they read it, but it, 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 the Torah does not impress upon them anything, it, they don't absorb it. So he says like this, Aset Torah Tcha, that which you are learning, which is important, make certain that that Torah should be keva, kavua balev shelcha. Make sure that those words that you learn uh, impact you. You, make the, you. you imprint them in your heart. Right? It's not just to read words. And some people, that's the way they learn. They read through it, like, like prayers. No. Aset Torah Tcha, Keva, that the words of the Torah should be something that is imprinted in your heart. It, it should stimulate you to greater avodat Hashem, to the greater service of Hashem. And as, as I remember one rabbi asking, uh, being told by his student, Rabbi, Baruch Hashem, I was able to learn through the whole Shas. It's a big achievement to learn all Gemarot. Today some people do it in seven, a little over seven years. In the olden days, before they had the Dafa Yomi, it, was it, it wasn't heard of that much. Very few people, even Tamid Decha Hamid, would not, did not learn through the whole Shas. did not learn all the Gemarot. There was other things to learn too. Anyway, either way, however you do it, it's a big achievement. So he's telling his rabbi, you know, Hashem, I was able to go through it. I was able to learn it. He says, that's not what's important for me to know about you, that you went through it, that you learned the Shas. I want to know if the, what the Shas taught you. You see? Not that you learned through it. But that's okay. That's very nice. To achieve. No, but uh, what's more important is what the Shas taught you. What did you get out of it? Going through it is, 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 can be, is something that can be done. With enough patience, right, and constancy, yeah, you can achieve it. You know, what did you get from it? That's more important. Keva. Keva is also significant, something that is fixed because of the following reason. The solar system, right, the entire solar system, we see that there is a central point in the solar system where everything rotates around it, the planets, right, the sun being at the center. So you have something that is central and pretty much fixed, I say pretty much fixed because even the sun moves, and even the sun rotates on its axis. But basically that is fixed in relationship to the rest of the solar system. So you have a constant and you have what's called in math variables. Because they vary their position. Like the moon, we see how it's, you know, it's going around the earth, right? And then one day you see it, one day you don't. So you have a constant and the rest is variables that are fluctuating, that are changing. In the same way that that is true with the solar system, 
That's the, what the one should have in his life. There should be one fixed point that you do not stray from, and everything around it adjusts around it. There are things in life that, need to, uh, that are important to us, and they have to be fixed. They have to be not movable, immovable, our values. And everything around it comes second and has to adapt to it because they come first, because they are center, right? One example, which is the most important example, is the Torah. The Torah needs to be a constant around which there are variables that have to adjust according to the Torah, not the other way around. For example, where am I going to live? I love Yosemite National Park. I like that place. There's not much traffic, very little smog, if anything. Weather is not bad. Fresh air, wildlife, green, quiet, nature. I mean, what else could you ask for? Even big mikvaot up, up there in the hills, right? the lakes. What's the problem with that place for a Jew? No Jewish schools, no Beta Knesset, no community. You can't, a Jew cannot be without a community. So we go there for vacation, for a visit, but we can't live there. So what are we doing? We are deciding on our place of living based on the Torah. The Torah is center, central, and it will determine where we will live. Because we will decide our, where we will live based on that which is constant and does not move. What else? Marriage. You're going out with a girl, you're going out with a young man. Is, this, is he or she for me? Well, will he or she allow me to live a life of Torah? If not, then this is not for me. You see what I mean? Oh, I'm going to make her religious. Oh, sure. Everybody says that. You know? It can't be that way. Unless, of course, you see that the young girl, young man, they're not so religious because they didn't grow up with it, but they're serious about religion. They demonstrate it. They go to classes. They're trying. That's different. Then you see that their attitude is there. Positive, and it's not a promise. Otherwise, as we say in Arabic, many times promises are kalam fadi. Kalam fadi means empty words. Is there something like that in Farsi too? Just somebody saying shtuyot nonsense, empty words. There's no guarantee to what he's saying. It's just air. Huh? I don't know what, if there's a term for it. Think about it. Let it tell me. <laughs> Daddy Betty, I guess. Daddy yeah. is just nonsense. That's just nonsense. That everything, yeah. Anyway, so the Torah is constant and everything else around it. Place of work. The type of work. Oh, they're making me work on Shabbat. Then that's not for you. Guess what? That job is not meant for you. Right? People have a hard time when it comes to Zivugim, especially if they like a girl, and the girl drops them. Guess what? She wasn't meant for you. That's all it is. If she was meant for you, and Hashem is happy with you, and Hashem is not upset with you, obviously, he wouldn't let that happen if she's meant for you. He's the one that brings people together. And somehow, even though it may appear for a couple months that it's going well, well, guess what? Some, if it's not meant to be, something is going to happen. It's going to be either her father, her mother, her friend, herself. Something that's going to make it go away. Because Hashem doesn't want you to marry the wrong person. He wants you to marry the best person possible that can compliment you, that you can compliment her. That's, that is, because marriage is not just a friendship of sharing a home. It's, it involves tremendous, a tremendous connection on a, the level of the soul, which will produce children, right? It's an interaction on a completely different level. It's not just a friendship. It has to be that the, it, it, that the two fit like a puzzle. There are exceptions. There are marriages which are tikkunim, but you can't figure out how they ever married. You know, those exist too. I'm talking about the normal marriage. A normal marriage, you see how each one needs each other. And you may not know it right away. You see it after a couple of years. You see it. Believe me, you see it. Right? So, the Torah is the one that has to be constant, where everything else around it may need to be adjusted. Not that we adjust the Torah, like the Reform and Conservative are doing. Times have changed. We've got to adjust the Torah and amend it and it changes. This does not apply. This is different. This is not. 
מה פתאום? חס ושלום, the Torah already warns us not to end, not to detract, not to make any change. The Torah will never change. That is part of our 13 principles the Rambam brings down. And they come up with all kinds of excuses of how times have changed. Yes, times have changed, but the Torah does not change. Therefore, you have to accommodate yourself, adapt yourself to the Torah, not the other way around. So the Torah has to be absolute, an absolute principle around which we make adjustments or changes. But we don't make those changes to the Torah. The next statement that Shammai makes is Emor me'at va'aseh harbe. Say little and do a lot. Le'avdil elef avdalot, it reminds me, I think, what Theodore Roosevelt used to say, one of the presidents of the United States. Speak softly and carry a big stick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here Shammai is telling us not so much about speaking softly, that we'll see later on. Here's talking about that our speech should not be full of words, verbose. We should not be very, very talkative. It's better to keep it down. Say little. It is a good thing to get used to because the way of the tzaddikim is to say little and to do a lot. He's talking about combining here speech with action. So obviously it is the speech that will lead to action. It's promises, commitments, saying, I will do this, I'll take care of this. You're always better off talking less for a variety of reasons that we will see. A variety of reasons. It's just better this way. And do a lot. Do as much as you can, of course. Do good things. That's the way of tzaddikim. They're more into the doing than into the talking. A lot of people just talk. That's all they know how to do. They don't do anything. They talk and they promise and they don't deliver. The trick is to do, to accomplish. So forget the talking, just get it over with. Do it. If it's the right thing, just go ahead and do it. Don't, play, don't even talk about it. So it's better to minimize the talking and focus more on the doing. And here comes a very interesting chazal, words of the rabbis that tell us that sometimes even a thought, that especially if it's a thought that is spoken out loud, machshava mo'elet b'divrei Torah. When it comes to doing something positive of Torah or mitzvot, a thought, a plan that is verbalized, usually, especially if, I think I'm almost sure especially if it's verbalized. I'm not sure if it's so much if it's just in your mind, nobody knows about it, but especially if it's verbalized, runs the risk of, be, of being frustrated. Frustrated meaning of being canceled. Here you have this idea, you're going to build a bit of You're going to do this one mitzvah. You're going to hopefully do this. Machshava mo'elet. Machshava mo'elet means that the thought, the plan, may interrupt the, the actual uh, deed. Why? Because when something, a plan, is spoken, if it's something positive, a mitzvah or Torah, ha-satan meshabesh ta-tochniot. The satan tends to try to interfere, leshabesh. How would we say Shabesh? To undo, to destroy, to interrupt the plans that we had. So sometimes it's better to keep it quiet. Something that is good, you have a good plan, you want to do something, don't necessarily reveal it or don't necessarily talk about it too much because machshava mo'elet, it's, it's, it's possible, it can happen that the thought, by verbalizing it or by talking about it too much, will interfere, it will attract the Satan to try to undo it. So you want to keep it secret, or you want to keep it quiet. So therefore, when you do have something that's very, very important to you that you want to do, start doing it even a little bit now. You get started, otherwise you will never do it. There will always be things that will interfere. I'm having myself a hard time. It's very, very difficult when you have all these plans, good plans, good ideas, things that you want to accomplish in life. Life is so short. You say, we're going to do this. Start. Do whatever you can right away. Don't push it off. Otherwise, there's so many things that come into one's life that's, that interfere, whether it's a doctor's appointment, whether it's uh, picking somebody up from the airport, 
whether it's uh, taking out the garbage. See, even small things like that on a day, you know, there's all kinds of things that throw you off. And when you're thrown off, nothing is accomplished or not as much. So going back to what we said before about Keva, you see how sometimes it is a good idea, as much as possible, to have some sort of schedule. At this hour, you know, I don't want any phone calls. No phone calls. Not even from President Obama, especially not from him. <laughs> <laughs> At this hour, right? <coughs> and then you will see. If nobody interrupts you, you can accomplish more. But if otherwise, five minutes, you can find them. Even though you had an hour, you don't have a full hour. You, you're not going to accomplish a lot. So it's, it's always good to get started, to do, to do whatever you can in Hashem Yazor that we should accomplish. Another pirush in Mor Me'at Vaserbe is minimize how much you have done in your own eyes. Ah, I haven't done enough. Somebody says, oh, Baruch Hashem, look what you did. Ah, it's nothing compared to what I've got to do. No more the more me'at, minimize to yourself in your own eyes what you've done. Don't think it's so much, so you should do more. So in more me'at vaserbe, in other words, if you minimize what you've done, Bezat Hashem, you'll be motivated to do more. Don't think that you've done so much. That's just another pirush. In the political world, we see how, how this plays out too. In the political diplomatic world, Iran promises to do something now. And they're promising every day, all kinds of things. North Korea is saying all kinds of things. So what is, what's the, the most popular reaction to these words that are empty? We will judge them by their actions, not by their words. You may have heard that from a lot of politicians saying that. And it's true. The only way we can judge a person is not by emor arbe. He's saying all kinds of things. Actions speak louder than words they say. That's how we will judge them. So emor me'at, because that's not what's gonna, how we're going to judge you. That's how we're going to judge you. When it comes to relationships, friendships, all kinds of kshareen, all kinds of connections, where you want to show devotion and that you're sincere, and this can apply to friendship or our kesha with Hashem in mitzvot. How does one demonstrate that he's devoted and sincere? Through actions, not through words. You know, you tell somebody, I like you, I appreciate, I love you. Yeah, okay. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. <laughs> How do you know? Prove it. Let's see. Do something that's hard for you to do. Yeah, that proves it. So actions are, speak louder. When one does something, it, it says something much more than words. Words are unfortunately not enough. Teshuvah. He's going to do Teshuvah. Really? Let's see you. Yeah, those are only words. Hashem no bagad, no words. Let's see. If you stop, if you change, you do something, that shows. I'm going to go on a diet. So they see him at a big wedding, eating from the shmogas board, all the good Persian foods. Right? And after he had a full shmogas board, you know, they tell me that they served a big meal at 12 o'clock. I, I, I don't understand why. You, you were, there was already a big meal at the shmogas board, but now down comes the big meal again. They love to eat sometimes. You know, so you see this guy who said to you that he was going to go on a diet, he's eating again. He says, what's with your diet? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow he's starting. Now he wants to enjoy himself. That's not called real dieting. If you take it seriously, if something is very important to you, a shiur, a, you know, a, a, a maase, then you, you demonstrate it. How are you going to do it? You, you start, you begin now. Not just empty words. Otherwise, when a person does not really do anything, he's just talking, he's not serious. It shows that he doesn't care so much. No. So that's why the actions are much more important than the words. Another reason why emor me'at va'aseh is so significant because a human being has the ability of speech. That's a special matana, a special gift that we've received that the animals don't have. And we have to watch over it. So when he's telling us emor me'at, He's telling us, hey, be careful with your speech. 
so much damage can come out of your speech. Lashonara, <coughs> right? And all kinds of things that people later on regret that they said. It therefore, limit that speech because it's, it's risky. Emor me'at. And the third statement, the last statement here that Shammai makes, is Receive every human being. It says not Jews, every human being, every goyim. You see one in the morning, howdy, how's it going? Some, some goyim do it on their own. They're gentlemen, they're nice, they're positive. It shows something about a person, by the way, you should know that. You know, not everyone has that natural uh, way of approaching somebody that is a stranger. It has to be somebody that is in peace with himself, somebody that believes in being friendly, because he doesn't have a mitzvah in his code of ethics to be like that. We do. We have a piece of advice here. But to some people, it almost comes natural. So it's something that we can learn to adapt, and that's what Shammai is telling us. You may not be like that naturally, but it's something that you should learn to adapt and, 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 and behave along these lines. So, is accept or receive every human being when you see him, when you, when you deal with him, with a happy countenance. In other words, with a smile. Sever panim yafot. Be nice to people, be pleasant, and smile. You know, when people don't see you smile, they, think they may think you're upset at them. Yeah, really, some people are, are negative, and they think that other people are negative to them too. You know, not necessarily, it could be just their nature is like that. They're quite reserved, they don't talk a lot. They're not upset at you. Give them the benefit of the doubt, but not everybody does that. So therefore, in order to eliminate miscommunication, misunderstandings, bad thoughts about people, and to be nice in general, it's a good idea, he says, to just be nice to people. And how do you are nice? Now, he doesn't talk about doing something for them here necessarily. He's talking about just smiling, just saying hello. That is so important. Now, let, let's take an example of, and let's see how, how important this is with the following example. The Gemara says that you can help a poor man much more sometimes by saying a kind word to him, by giving him encouragement, than by giving him your $18. What's the $18 going to do? What, what, not even $100. This man needs $25,000 right now for a surgery. He's, how, how much are you going to contribute over that? It's gonna, it's, of course, every penny counts. Sometimes the words of encouragement will, do, will go a lot farther than the money. He needs that. He's a broken man. Who knows what he's going through, what pressures he has. And the Gemara therefore says, the Gemara doesn't say those words, but you infer that from the, what the Gemara says, that you get more blessings for doing that, than just giving him the peruta, and giving him the money. So if you gave him money and you asked him to sit down and have a drink, and you gave him encouragement, you know what, you know what a bigger mitzvah that is? It's tremendous! Not everybody, of course, wants to have a drink or sit down, but sometimes they need it. They may ask for it too. And even if they don't ask for it, you'll be the first to offer it. That's also called the seven panim yafot. It's not just a smile. It's, the, it's acknowledging them. It's identifying with their problem, hearing them. Perhaps you may think of some idea to help them. In order to be able to do that, you not only need patience, you not only have to be a gentleman and generous and giving, but you have to Look at them as sever panim yafot in order that they should accept your offer. <coughs> the rabbis tell us if a, if a rich man gives a poor man a thousand dollars, but he gives it with panim yerudot, panim zafot, he gives them he gives that money with uh, in a very very bitter look, with a very bitter, kind of a, a sad look, a depressed look. It's better that he should not have given him anything and treated him like that. Because the poor man feels insulted, he feels hurt by the way he treated him. So what's the thing with the money? Look how he looked at me, looked how he spoke to me. You know, some people give a check and they say, next time go look for a job. Don't say that and don't give him a penny, you're better off. 
people don't understand that. What, how words can hurt. And sometimes it's better not, not to deal with that kind of situation if you can't control yourself. Yeah. You mentioned before, Rabbi, that some people are very quiet. And yeah. um, even on their face, they may not show a lot of emotion. So if the person gives them the money, that really doesn't show any emotion. Could the other person take it as being, well, this person was giving it to me heavy of heart and not necessarily with an open hand? Not necessarily. No emotion it could be neutral. Well, I'm talking about that he, he shows a face where he's unhappy. Where, it's, where, where it, it, you can see on the person's face that he's not happy. He's just, you know. No, should you force yourself to smile Would you, when you give him a mic? Yeah, of course. You force him to smile. You tap him on the back. You shake his hand. You, you give him, you, you do something. Shammai is basically telling us, listen, you may not be like this. Get your act together. Train yourself to be like that. Because you know what? If a person trains himself in the habit of accepting or receiving people with a smile, he himself will be a happier person. Because he may be a quiet, reserved person. By doing that, he's forcing him, he's compelling his nature to be a little bit more positive. He will be therefore happy. Yes, yes. It, it does it to him too. So you're not only affecting somebody else's spirits, you're doing it to yourself too. This particular midah is very, very helpful for people who have an anger management problem. They get angry. They're temperamental. Receive people with a smile. Speak nicely to them. Treat them well. This helps with anger. That's what the rabbis tell us. It's, it's very, very special when a person can really treat everybody very nicely. It's a very special thing. It's not easy. Because what happens if this guy comes in rags into your home? He has mud in his shoes. And he smells like he hasn't taken a shower in six weeks. Not one week, six weeks. A, there's a difference. What then? Very t it requires tremendous strength to treat him with a smile. There was a great rabbi by the name of the rabbi of Binden, I think, that was renowned for his achnasat orchim. One day he was busy in a very important meeting with great rabbis, and some guy came from the street, you know, needed, I don't know, a place to sleep or some food or some tzedakah. So he came in, in the middle of the meeting, and, you, and the rabbi knew that this man was uh, somebody that needed some help. So the rabbi turns to his wife and he says, there's a very, very important and special guest here. Please take care of him right now because I'm busy. So the wife was curious. She never saw this man before. But her husband said, very special, very important guest. Take care of him. So she fed him. She took care of him. Baruch Hashem. And he left afterwards. When the meeting was over, the, the wife comes over to her husband, the rabbi, rabbi, uh, my husband. Who was the special guest? I don't know. A guest. <laughs> but initially, he told her, important and special. So she should not in any way lower the standards. Right? But to treat him, to feed him, and do everything right. So he had to say that. That's how he was. He was very, very careful in, make, in treating everyone as special. But it's not natural to everybody. He was like that. So Shammai is telling us, you can become like that, and you should want to be like that. Okay, I think we should just do maybe two more interpretations on these last words. There are very different kinds of interpretations, and what Shammai says towards the end, is treat everyone with a, with a smile, be kind, be, uh, be pleasant. He says, that there's an interpretation that says like this, Shammai is reminding us the words of Yirmiyahu. Yirmiyahu, the prophet, tells us more or less the following words. Something like that. Yirmiyahu says, the rich man should not be proud of his wealth, the smart man should not be proud of his intelligence. 
And the strong man should not be proud of his strength. Where can one be proud of? What can one be proud of? What, where, what should one be proud of? How much did he get to know me? How much did he learn about me? Yemiel says, how much did you get close to Kadosh Baruch Hu? That's something to be proud of. All these other things, the reason Yemiel says they're nothing to be so proud of is because they're gifts, Mishamayim, they're part of your mazal. A real achievement is Torah Virat Shamayim. Askel Veyadoa Oti. How much did you come to know me? So Yemiel basically touches on three achievements that people like to, t to be proud of. Chochma, Osher, right? And Gvura, and strength. So Shammai is telling us these three things make them, if you have them, one or all three, make sure that you focus them on the Tachlit, on the ultimate purpose of life. In other words, Keneget Chochmah, actually the words of Mechabelet Kol Adam Yosef is not necessarily just for this, it's all the three statements that he said relates to that Pasuk, I should say. So he says those three things that Yemiyahu is talking about is what Shammai is talking about, but Shammai is telling us how to use them. In other words, Keneget Chochmah, corresponding to Chochmah, he tells us, Aset Torat Chakeva. If you have Chochmah and you love to learn, and you value learning, make sure that it's kavua, that it's regular. Keneged osher, if you're blessed with wealth, make sure that you comply with the next statement, emor me'at vaser be. Talk little, but do a lot. Use the money for good things. At least share it with others. Right? Use what Hashem has given to you for, the, for good causes. Don't just brag about it or talk about it. Keneged Vura, corresponding to Vura and to strength, he told us Kabel, the last statement, Kabel et Kordam Mesebe Penim Mefot, because Vura has to do with Ezu Gibor, HaKovesh et Yitzor. True strength lies in, 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 a very, in the following feat, that a person is able to control his anger, his temperament. So if you have Vura, demonstrate it in that area, in the area of controlling one's Yetzirah, one's evil inclination. The second interpretation has to do with another Mishnah that we've already covered, and that is that the world stands on three things. Remember that? Torah, Avodah, and Gvinut Chasadim. So again, we have a set of three. The world was created, and the only purpose for the world to continue to exist is if there is Torah in service of Hashem in kindness. So Shammai is telling us that these three statements corresponding to those three. In other words, that Torah that the world stands of, on, that Torah that we, we, we learned about, you know how important of a pillar it is? Therefore, make sure that it's keva, that it's constant and regular in your life. Gimilut Chasadim, remember that? The world stands on that? The world is created for that? Make sure that you do, that you, that you follow through. Not that you talk about, be kind, be generous. No, do it yourself. Or I should say, in other words, demonstrate that with a smile and be kind-hearted. In Avodat Hashem is, I think, the, the third one. When it comes to Avodat Hashem, make sure that you say little and you do a lot. In other words, when it comes to Ma'asim, deeds, practice what you preach, do more than what you say, and in this way, you will be fulfilling your, your mission, not just by talk, but by action. Last but not least, even though Shammai says that a person can adapt these things in his life, a person can train himself to be like that, and he should. It's a very beautiful and important thing to do, to be pleasant, to be kind, to be a man of action, to be a man that will, of constancy, a man who promises, who delivers. All of these are good midot. But all of this will not happen if a person does not want it himself. You have to want it. In other words, you have to believe in it. You have to really convince yourself this is not only valid, it's true, and I want it. Once you've overcome that barrier of wanting it, there's nothing that can stand in the way of the will. If, if this is our will to want to do it, 
then the, the chances are we will do it. It's not easy. And therefore, when it comes to chesed, kindness, kindness is, 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 comes natural to some people. They're so nice. They, they, they take off their shirt off their back, they say in English, and they give it to you. Yeah, there are some people like that. But the average person is not like that. So therefore, chesed, even though it's a mitzvah of the Torah, to be gomel chesed, to be kind, to be charitable, the Torah is telling us, because if the Torah would not tell us, people would not do it on their own. So the Torah gives us a mitzvah to transform us to be such people. So we get mitzvah, you do this, do this, and now hopefully after a while of doing it, you become like that. So therefore, the, the Shammai says, even though that's true that the Torah will help us, the goal is that you should want to do this on your own. You should not feel, oh, I have a mitzvah to do now. No, the goal is, be kind, be pleasant, be a good person with others, and hopefully, at some point, you will want to do this on your own, not because this is a chova, an obligation, because you realize that this is the right thing, and it will come naturally to you. So this is a tremendous achievement, a tremendous, I think one of the most important achievements in life, the rabbis tell us, is not learning all these books. Big achievement, okay. Some people are great in reading, right? A great achievement is working on imida working on a certain characteristic that was tough, but we overcame all the hurdles and obstacles and all the challenges. We actually worked hard, but we achieved. So when a person becomes a Baal Chesed on his own through tremendous, of course, effort and constant work, that is the greatest of achievement of all. That is a, that is a Baal Chesed. Even though it's true that a Baal Chesed could be somebody who's born with that midah, he is like that. He's a Baal Chesed too. But guess what? Upstairs, who's going to get more reward? The one who worked harder on doing something. It came, it came hard to him. It came hard to, it came hard to give charity. It came hard to him to do chesed. It came hard to him to, to perform any mitzvah. Nevertheless, he did it. He grew up in a family that's not religious. He grew up in a surroundings where everybody was making fun of him. Where they're telling me, you're primitive. What are you doing? This guy? And there are people like that. In various communities, I don't have to mention the names of the communities, <laughs> Where they make fun. They don't understand what this is. What are you doing here? Covering your hair? You know, telling a woman, look away. Right? You know, all kinds of things. You know, unfortunately, these people don't have the right ideas. They didn't learn Torah. <coughs> when a person learns Torah, obviously his ideas change. So here we're getting ex excellent advice. Advice that Bezat Hashem will transform, has the potential of transforming every human being. Okay. Thank you.